going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day today. Having a look at the Bitcoin price. This is actually wrong because moments before I decided to record the video, Bitcoin randomly had a pump back up to over $11,000. $500. Now, in yesterday's video, I was cautiously optimistic about the bullish sentiment and the price movement in Bitcoin, right? We asked the question, could we potentially see one last final shakeout before we have the massive blast off? Well, in today's video, number one, we have Timothy Peterson. Now, he is the person who correctly predicted or forecasted, I should say, the Bitcoin price at the end of 2018 when we had the incredible bearish bull market after the massive rally, right? And now he is saying that, in his opinion, we will never see Bitcoin below $11,000 again. He's putting his neck out on the line. Well, he actually says there's a 90% chance, okay? But he says there's a 98% chance that we never go below $10,000. So I want to talk talk about this prediction today. Are we not going to have that crazy pullback? Are we basically just going to go straight to the moon from here on out? That's what I want to discuss because a lot of people are saying, you know what? We are still technically not in a bull market. Well, I am going to show you today why, yes, we are in a bull market. I'm going to show you on the charts exactly why Bitcoin is set up for the $15,500 level that I spoke about in my video a couple days ago. I don't really remember because we did break out of that descending broadening wedge, right? So I want to talk about that. Also, the fact that Fidelity Digital Investments has come out with a recent report and said that literally trillions are bound to pour into Bitcoin. We also have almost $7 billion in these companies, these public companies that are just investing in Bitcoin, MicroStrategy, Square. We have Grayscale who owns a ton of it, right? So what does this mean for the amount of Bitcoin left for the rest of us? What is going to happen when there eventually reaches that point where even the OTC can't keep up with the demand, right? We're not having enough Bitcoin mined daily. So these are all things we need to consider. And I also want to touch on the fact that regardless of what happens for the presidential election, some people think if this happens, if he wins and he wins, this will happen. Well, I'm going to show you why regardless whoever wins, it is still going to be extremely bullish for Bitcoin, okay? So that is what we're going to talk about today. We could potentially just be getting started for the massive, massive parabolic rally. Should we be getting excited? Well, I'm always excited, guys. But on this show today, this episode, that's what we're going to be talking about. If all that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Also, if you hear some banging in the background, I do have uh, some work getting done on my house right now. I'm renovating downstairs, so you might hear some crazy noises in the background. Don't be alarmed, but let's dive in super quick. I'm not going to go crazy into the charts today. Not much has changed, but I do want to point out the fact that we are sitting above my bullish blue box territory. Now, this has actually been acting as a little bit of support recently. This is super bullish, guys. If we can maintain above this, close out a nice weekly candle, I am going to probably take back what I said yesterday and say we're probably not going to see that dip, okay? Because like Timothy Peterson is saying, now keep in mind he's over from Kane Island, he basically says we're not going to go below 11,004. He shows right here a 90% chance of Bitcoin remaining above 11,000, 90% chance Bitcoin remains above 10,000, 98% chance Bitcoin remains above 10,000. Why does it say the same thing? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. This was back in August 18th, 98% chance today that it remains above 10,000. Sorry. So like I said, this guy's putting his neck on the line. He did accurately predict the 2018 bear market. So do you think, what do you guys think right off the bat? Do you think we're not going to see Bitcoin go below $11,004? What do you think? Bitcoin's pretty volatile. I'm not going to say that I that we're never going to dip below this, but hey, I'll take it. We've had plenty of time for uh, you know accumulation. Now, on the bearish side, let's look at both sides. Crypto Hamster, I enjoy following his analysis over on Twitter. He's talking about the daily time frame showing a TD sequential green nine, a confirmation needed, of course. Also, there is a bearish divergence on the four hour time frame. A correction is very likely to occur soon. And that was sort of what we were discussing yesterday was does Bitcoin need that sort of 30 percent pullback? before we have the rally, right? Maybe I'm just scarred. I'm just scarred from the bear market. What can I say? I, I just, I have difficulty believing that we're just going to go up in a straight line. Although I do think Bitcoin is going to end the year at a very high level. I think we could see 15,000 by Christmas. Are we going to break all time high? 
I don't know. It does depend on the FOMO. But let's go back. Let's go back to a tweet from Alex Kruger. What he said, this was back in March of this year, March 11th. He said, technically, if Bitcoin is below 7,700 during the 2020 uh, you know, year, then the bull trend is over. Well, we're definitely above 7,700. He says the next levels are 7,400, 7,200, 6,800, then 6,400. Well, we're nowhere near those levels. He says above 8,500, it's back to bullish territory. So this was back in March, and you could see the Bitcoin price was actually pushing downwards below 8,000 at that time. We were sitting around 7,800. Currently, we're at $11,500. Maybe it's different by the time you're watching. Bitcoin would have to go down $3,000 to basically get down to these low bearish levels again, or minimally down to $8,500, right? So yeah, I mean, point being, $8,500 were considered bullish territory. We're, we're at $11,500. So that is just something to consider. And also, let's have a look at what Bitcoin is doing, having this sort of consolidation up towards the end of this ascending. It's kind of like an asymmetrical triangle really depends on where you draw it. But recently right here, look, and I'm going wick to wick, okay? And you really shouldn't even do this. You should probably just keep it right at the candles. However, if we look at the candles, the candles right here, going back to the close we had in July 1st, August 5th, and right here when we briefly got above it, we're looking at around an 11524 dollar Bitcoin uh, level and we're and we're at around 11,500. Bitcoin is start is pulling back a little bit right now as I'm making this video. But you can see right here, if we maintain this trend, then this shows that Bitcoin could go below 11,000, but we should maintain around $10,700 and if we do have that breakout, we're looking for the $12,200 level. I talked about this level being the most significant level yesterday in Bitcoin's video. Everyone's like, oh, another critical move, most important level. This is the most important level. I mean, literally the most important level. If we break this right here, you're pretty much talking what? What's the next resistance? We got to get up to 13,800, which is where we had the monthly close in December of 2017. And then what? What do we have after that? The $20,000 top. There's no volume, no VPVR in that range. Price discovery is pretty much open, endless. It could be anything, right? So... It's going to be very interesting times. I'm very excited. This is sort of the moment we've all been waiting for. Is it going to happen tomorrow? Not necessarily. You could see as far as this consolidation is concerned, Bitcoin could continue to consolidate for one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, we could potentially consolidate sideways staying below $12,000 all the way out to December. You'd probably get a little bit bored, but that would literally be the last opportunity for accumulation. Like for real this time, for real, for real this time. Okay, for real, I know, I know, I've said that before, but for real this time, that would literally be the last opportunity, right? Now, let's talk about the fact that we we mentioned Stone Ridge, right? Multi-billion dollar company. They bought 10,000 Bitcoin, uh, over 115 million. Now, the asset managing firm joins over 15 publicly traded companies that are holding cryptocurrencies on their balance sheets. Trading veteran Peter Brandt believes that such a spike in demand will be the catalyst that ignites the bull market in this sector. Meanwhile, multinational financial services corporation Fidelity maintains that capital influx will continue to accelerate. We're actually going to get into this a little bit more later. Quick summary, as the new wave of retail investors familiarize themselves with these channels, some of their attention will undoubtedly flow to Bitcoin and other digital assets. Now, there was something pointed out that could have been potentially bearish, maybe, but I'm going to give my opinion. And that's the fact that on-chain data was actually showing that the number of addresses with 1,000 to 100,000 Bitcoin has been dropping rapidly since the beginning of the year. Nearly 10 whales have left the network or redistributed their tokens. Now, let's think about this logically. Does this mean that they're selling? Well, are they moving it to exchanges? Because we've seen exchange inflows going down. We've seen the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges actually at extremely low levels. So this tells me that they're either moving it around, redistributing it into different cold storage, or here's an option. Maybe they're actually looking to buy some altcoins. I don't know, right? That could be a possibility. Maybe they're getting bullish on altcoins, but most likely they're just shuffling around for anonymity, redistributing it. Don't forget, every time you move Bitcoin on a ledger, even though you're using the same ledger, it gives you a new Bitcoin address, right? Every time. So it's still the same person. They just have multiple wallets. So it could still be a whale. He just doesn't have all his Bitcoin in one wallet. 
he has it in multiple wallets, he or she, right? That could be a possibility. So just wanted to point that out. Now, talking about what Fidelity Digital Assets had to say, if you don't know who they are, they're the cryptocurrency subsidiary of Fidelity Investments, okay? So they published a bullish report that described how trillions of dollars could flow into Bitcoin. The report highlights how the role of emerging and frontier or pre-emerging equities in global portfolio diversification have dramatically increased over the past decades. Emerging markets usually offer much higher returns than their mature cousins do to higher growth prospects, right? Now, the acceptance of Bitcoin, this is a quote from this quote, The acceptance of Bitcoin in institutional portfolios today can be compared with the acceptance of emerging and frontier equities in portfolios in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The resistance to the inclusion of emerging markets was driven by concerns about factors like volatility and liquidity. Where have we heard these complaints before, right? So after two cycles of enormous returns, emerging markets now account for 11% of the 43 trillion global equities market. Further, they estimate that if just 1%, okay, think about that number, just 1% of the 50 trillion bond market entered into Bitcoin, it would boost the market cap of Bitcoin an additional 500 billion. We're already sitting around 220 billion ish, depending 218, something like that. So if you actually add that together, you're looking at about 720 billion, which would put Bitcoin's price at roughly $38,000, which is over a 3x from where we are right now. And that only accounts for 1%. How is that not bullish? How is that not bullish, my friends? Also, Speaking about these publicly traded companies, right? Let's actually have a look. I'll get to this chart in a second. So we have Grayscale with 5 billion in Bitcoin under management, but they are being quickly followed by some of these other companies, these publicly traded companies as well. Holdings at public companies has now topped 6.8 billion this year. According to Coin98 Analytics, a total of 13 public companies have now invested in Bitcoin. I thought it was 15, could be 13. Maybe it's more at this point. Maybe we don't even know yet. But in total, the 13 companies have almost 600,000 Bitcoin. And here's an example of, or here's a, uh, you know, an infographic showing you. Grayscale is obviously still leading at around 450,000 Bitcoin. Then we have CoinShares, MicroStrategy, Galaxy Digital, M- M- Michael Novogratz, right? You have uh, Cypherpunk Holdings, Argo, Digital X, Voyager, Square, which we talked about the other day. And I have a feeling that this is going to continue to grow over time. MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor, who has arguably been one of the biggest impressions in crypto this year, or made one of the biggest impressions, he was recently quoted saying, Bitcoin is the first digital monetary system capable of storing all the money in the world for every individual corporation and government in a fair and equitable manner without losing any of it If that's not intrinsically valuable, what is? Don't want to tell you bullish, but sounds kind of bullish. Now, this is a tweet from Pompliano. This was back in May of last year, but I think it holds true today. He says, Bitcoin is a non-correlated asymmetrical return asset. By putting it in your portfolio, you can reduce the risk profile, increase Sharpe ratio, and produce a material amount of impact on overall portfolio with a single digit allocation. Essentially, it improves your portfolio. And as Tyler Winklevoss recently stated, now he retweeted this article from Behringer, which says stocks are rising as optimism builds for a bigger U.S. stimulus package. And basically what he said in response was stonks love nothing more than when the money printer goes burr like an A-10 warthog. It's full-fledged addiction that's not going to end until it has to. And when this happens, it's hard to predict. But what's certain is that Bitcoin will be your only refuge. And just one more thing. Axie market market analyst Milan Kutkovid wrote in notes to clients, while a deal between Republicans and Democrats ahead of the U.S. presidential election still seems unlikely, market participants are reacting positively to signals that both parties are feeling the pressure to take action as the economy recovery may soon run out of steam. So moral of the story, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. 
All right, so let's talk about some interesting altcoin news. Well, number one, congratulations to Chainlink. The cumulative transaction on transaction on Chainlink has recorded a new all-time high transaction volume totaling 30 billion. So, hey, looks like the Link Marines are in fact back in action. And also, um, I have to just bring up this post from our uh, good old buddy, Justin Sun. It's been a while since we've mentioned him on the channel. He went on a crazy rant. I don't know if you guys saw this, so pretty much he's comparing BitTorrent to Bitcoin. I wanted to read some of this from you and ask you your opinion on this, all right? So listen to this. He says BitTorrent is arguably the most, and we all know he's very famous for his announcements of announcements thing, whatever, but BitTorrent is arguably the most disruptive tech in the brief history of data itself and changed the internet since its start. It's fitting that for so long, the face of P2P technology, BitTorrent, has been unapologetically peerless. An argument can be made that BitTorrent is to decentralize storage what Bitcoin is to finance. Put simply, is BitTorrent the Bitcoin of decentralized storage? And I want you guys to comment on this. Please drop your opinions on this. Has any, does anybody use BitTorrent, by the way? I really don't use it. Has anybody used it? What is what is the experience like? I am curious to hear about that. But he says, BitTorrent is the pioneer of decentralization. Satoshi cited BitTorrent as an example of a P2P network that might give digital currency true value. Value. Lessons of BitTorrent gave to Bitcoin's value. Fragmented competitors never threaten its infrastructure just like Bitcoin. BitTorrent changed the world with its immediate large data transfer capabilities adopted immediately by companies like Blizzard, Facebook, and Twitter. The distributed architecture of the community and tech behind BitTorrent made it in perturbable. This is the same power we appreciate so much about Bitcoin. BitTorrent breaks the rules of data sharing. Bitcoin does this for value. And fi uh, no, by using um, undeviatingly on sharing, by focusing undeviatingly on, sh excuse me guys, undeviatingly, I can't talk today, on sharing, BitTorrent breaks the rules of caste systems, class warfare, socioeconomic structure, etc. for our human rights to share data freely. We should be in awe. Bitcoin and BitTorrent exist to equalize knowledge and wealth despite the actions of oppressors. This feels like a speech straight out of Braveheart. Over 2 billion devices have watched a human on the other side performed this exact process using BitTorrent feels like fighting the power. BitTorrent is as disruptive to decentralized storage as Uber was to taxi drivers. BitTorrent is Bitcoin for decentralized storage. Wow. That was uh, that was a heck of a tweet storm. I that that is that is some super conviction, and uh, I don't know. I just want your opinion. Is BitTorrent really that great, guys? Let me know. Maybe I've been missing out on it all this time. Justin certainly seems convinced. So just thought that was interesting. Haven't really seen one of these tweet storms from Justin in a while. So figured we were due for one. And finally, you know, speaking of these other smart contract platforms, you guys know I'm super bullish on Polkadot. That's sort of like. The one I got my eyes on right now, uh, a few others as well, you know, Elrond, but Zillica, they were one of the first ones to really implement that sharding, and they did announce the launch of Zillion. It's a non-custodial staking platform. Now, if you don't know, like I said, they were one of the first to implement the sharding architecture, and they do feature smart contracts written in the proprietary programming language Scylla. So Zillica's smart contract platform scales linearly without comp Compromising on the needed security provided by decentralization of validating nodes, the platform successfully balances the prevailing blockchain trilemma of security, scalability, and decentralization. And if you guys want to learn more about Zillica, I actually did an in-depth review back when I used to do full video reviews uh, a while ago. So you can actually just Google it or YouTube it, look up Crypto Zombie Zillica, and uh, yeah. That's basically that, guys. So having a look at Bitcoin, what is going on? Oh my goodness, massive rejection back down to the level. Massive rejection. Look at that. Look at that, guys. So I don't know. I don't know. Could we still have that pullback? Is it still possible? Not too sure, guys. You let me know. I'm a Bitcoin bull. You guys know that. I'm insanely bullish on Bitcoin. However, oh, look, we pulled back down. We are back down into... We're still in the bullish zone, though. But like I said, straight to the moon. Not too sure. Uh, wow, interesting video. I guess if I had just waited, if I had literally just waited five minutes, we would have just been back to the level that we were before I even started the video. So there's a lot of excitement in the beginning of the video, and now we're back down to the same levels anyway. So 
Maybe I wasn't 100% wrong in my video yesterday. We shall see. We shall see. Let me know your opinion on the price of Bitcoin as we move forward. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.